The cost of policing is the city of Edmonton's biggest day-to-day expense. Last week, City Council approved a funding formula to budget for police services over the next three years, and that decision came after hours of debate. So we wanted to hear from a couple of councillors about some of the issues that were involved in this whole discussion. Ward Dene Councillor Aaron Paquette was among the majority who voted in favour of the new funding formula, while Councillor Aaron Rutherford, uh, who represents Ward Anyonok, is one of four who voted against it, and they both join us in the studio. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, now, uh, Councillor Perquette, let's start with you uh, in simple terms, just so we can put everyone on the same page here. What did City Council eventually agree to here? Yeah, so what City of Council eventually agreed to, and, and in very broad and simple strokes, is that uh, police funding formula um, would basically be an allocation of money that would not exceed 30% of our operational budget. And so right now, it's, uh, you know, I think it's about 27.6 or something like that. And it's been trending upward year over year over year. So we decided 30%, that's a hard stop. And uh, EPS and uh, the Edmonton Police Commission both said, yeah, that will be exactly sufficient to what we need in order to do the job. Now, why did you vote in favor of this? Uh, Because I saw that trend line. I saw that it was going to surpass 30% in the coming years. And I thought, you know, without some sort of formula, um, we're going to find ourselves in a position where we are having constant and never-ending debates about uh, police funding. But if we can all agree that 30% is going to be the hard stop, then that will free up council time and also ensure that we do not pass that 30% mark. Now, Councillor Rutherford, you voted against this. Why is that? I really just looked at the math, and yes, there's a 30% ratio that's in the, the formula, but there's a lot of loopholes to that, right? There's the fact that the uh, collective bargaining is not included in scope of the funding formula, which has been included in the past. There's the ability for Edmonton Police Service or the commission to still continue to bring back service packages uh, on multiple things. And so, you know, one of the things I said in my closing is, once we get to that 30% cap, what there's so many ways that there can still be additional funds added. And I don't think it takes away the debate of funding that I think we're trying to alleviate with this funding formula. Uh, so then let's go back to you, Councillor Paquette. What are some of the concerns, if you do have any, about this kind of a funding strategy, though? Oh, I have lots of concerns. Um, the, they're the same concerns I had before this debate, and the concerns continue going forward. Uh, municipalities actually don't control a lot of things. A lot of people uh, might think we do, but we are governed by the provincial government and their police act in this case. And the police act um, says that police forces must be adequately funded. There is no other definition to that. And so it is up to the purview of the province to ultimately define that. Um, We've seen in the past the province making noise about police funding and things like that. So We know that uh, if uh, there was ever a very serious and contentious issue here, the province would actually step in. The other aspect of this is that police funding is kind of a black box. We don't have access. We don't see what their budgets are. Unlike other branches in the city of Edmonton, the police stand alone. The Edmonton Police Commission, which is a separate body, is the one who oversees that and looks at the budget and is sort of the, the conduit to council and what council has been asking for and part of this discussion really brought it forward is can we get meaningful metrics, targets, measurements, outcomes, can we get uh, public access so the public can see where their budget is going? These are ongoing concerns. Mm -hmm. Well, because that is one of the things, transparency. We talk a lot about line-by-line budgets in so many other departments, not something that we see in policing. So, Councillor Rutherford, what do you think on on that angle of it all, too? Well, it's been interesting. You know, as a first-time councillor, we have asked a lot of hard questions on a lot of budget lines across the city. But nowhere do we get the rhetoric that because we're asking hard questions, we're anti-transit or anti-waste right, except for policing. And I think there's a dynamic there and a narrative that exists around asking hard questions and asking for accountability and making sure we're doing due diligence with our, in our fiscal responsibility, which is creating that, determining what that funding envelope is. Uh, so I, I, I think that that's part of the reason. I think there's a very different cultural perception to questioning police budgets than there is other 
municipal budget lines. And is that dealt with in this funding formula at all to have more transparency, to have maybe more line by line idea for this for citizens to know, not just the police commission? The simple answer is no. Yeah. And and to add to that, it's because we can't. Why can't we? That is part of the, the provincial legislation. Yeah. That's right. Hmm. Yeah. So we are we are hands are tied. However, what we have done is move the needle forward on the conversation. Uh, I ask quite Openly, so Edmonton Police Commission, EPS, are you open to more transparency? Are you open to the possibility of even an audit from the Office of the City uh, Auditor here in Edmonton in order to take a look at the books, in order to show the public that their dollars are being well spent? And there was that openness, which is a first. And so the dial is moving. Mm -hmm. I think that people are understanding this. But um, look, we agreed on a funding formula. Uh, in order to provide some kind of stability and predictability. Uh, however, um, future councils can make their own decisions on that. Councillor Rutherford, I want to go back to you for one more moment because I, I talked about concerns with Councillor mm-hmm. Perquette, who voted yes to this. You voted no, but I wanted to ask if there's anything about it that you do support about this funding formula. Well, I, obviously, I think we had a debate, lengthy debate last fall about whether we do service packages or a funding formula. And at that point, I supported the principles of a funding formula. I do agree that we want to stop, you know, getting into these nitpicky where we're actually probably a little bit circumventing the police act that Councillor Paquette mentions by picking and choosing what service packages, because it's also a little bit of a, a, f- a shell game, because ultimately, once we provide funding to the police, whether they use it for those service packages or not, uh, is out of our hands as well. And so I agree with the funding formula in principle, but we also gave direction back then uh, when we had that debate that said we needed some tweaks to the funding formula. And what we got back this spring or this summer was essentially the same funding formula that was uh, debated in the fall. And I needed to see some significant changes to be able to support that, including uh, a slow decrease of that 30% ratio over time. I needed to see the services packages be a little bit more clear about what could and couldn't be brought back. And I needed to see um, that collective bargaining um, included in that formula. Now, Councillor Perquette, EPS is one of the most well-funded police services in Canada per capita. So some citizens may be wondering, why does it need more money each year? Well, that's a really good question. You know, some people say, oh, uh, you know, there's this impression the city council defunded the police at some time in the past. That's not true. Police uh, budgets have only ever gone up. There was a reduction to the amount it was going to go up during the pandemic budgets, but it's always gone up. But what we did with that reduction is we took that $11 million, we put it toward community safety and well-being uh, programs. Um, because obviously we want to address the determinants of crime. However, it's a job too big for the city. You know, when I say that the province has to step in, the federal government has to step in, some people say, hey, you're passing the buck. But the reality is that there's no buck to pass here. If municipalities could handle addictions, mental health, and housing, we would. But legislatively and budgetarily, legally, we cannot. We need the province to step in. And uh, Premier Smith herself called what's happening in Alberta streets a crisis level. And so they're aware that there's a problem in our streets. They just haven't done anything about it that's meaningful and has an impact yet. And municipalities across Alberta are starting to feel this pressure more and more and more. And so when we're talking about the most well-funded police force in Canada, we have all of these determinant factors. We've got increasing homelessness, increasing addictions. We can see, all see it clearly in our streets. It's a human tragedy. And we've also got, um, you know, in Edmonton, we are the hub for all of the northern communities. When people have to come to the hospital or they're coming for any reason, and if they find themselves in a dire situation, this is where they remain. And so we've got a bunch of feeder systems that add to the pressures there. Um, so for people to say, uh, you know, we've defunded the police or something like that, that's not true. But for also what is true is that we are the best funded police service in Canada for like-sized cities per capita, and that's only growing. And one of the promises we got from EPS during this debate is that we were going to see more presence, we're going to see more positive interventions, 
And uh, so we will all be watching. Council Rutherford, when we when we hear those sorts of statements, we do know that citizens are worried about safety. There's been a lot of discussion around that. So how do you see police being funded to support that, to create a sense of safety? You know, one of my council colleagues brought up a really uh, important statistic in the debate that 33% of EPS is actually boots on the ground, right? So when we talk about the best funded police service in Canada... I absolutely want to see more boots on the ground. I want to see, but I want to see that ratio higher. I don't want to see it 33%. I want to see it 45, 50%. You know, obviously you need some administration, but this is not the ratio we need. And we're also having a major problem with hiring. You know, we've been promised 50 more police officers funding from the province. We've now funded them more money, but we still only have so many recruit classes and those recruit classes are having trouble recruiting. And so... You know, I, I am very, very cautiously hopeful, but skeptical at the same time that this money will actually alleviate the problems that we're seeing in the city. I'm sure we could talk about this for another 15, 20 minutes easily. Thank you to both of you for coming in this morning, though, to scratch the surface on it. And uh, hopefully we can continue this conversation another time.